By the way, guys, how do you like the new chairs? Uh, this kind of sucks. Sucks? Why? Because they're really uncomfortable. Really? Compared to the uh, director's chair that we had before? Well, at least you could sit there and your lower back was sort of supported. This yeah. one doesn't. Really. Yeah, these are architecturally interesting chairs, but yeah, definitely not the best. Uh, it's supporters. eye candy. Yeah. It's beautiful the, the, to look the, at. The, the Eames and the other chair is a bit lower, but it's Well, that's it's a better chair than what Lewis is sitting Yeah, this is a good chair. Yeah. This is the ideal chair for you to have Whoa. and you don't want people to stick around. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada. I didn't really mean that. Uh, Philip, <laughs> Lewis. And today we're going to talk about the Acora SRC1s. So um, Acora is a Canadian company. They, they've been uh, around for quite a long time. Like five um, years? Uh, longer than that. But they, as an official... Yeah, they made speakers, but they didn't make it in production for various logistical reasons. They uh, Back then, they, they, they were also using granite, but the machinery required to cut granite to the kind of tolerance that Val wanted didn't really exist, and it was just going to be too difficult to do so. He shelved it until a few years ago when uh, they were able to finally make... Um, yeah, so in the old days, you, you could cut it, but each piece would be different. It would be off by a little bit. You'd have to hand finish every piece to make it all fit together. Yeah. yeah so anyway, yeah, um, this this is called the SRC one. Let me just give you the the um, specs first. It's a two way base reflex, seven inch paper cone, one inch soft dome, eight ohms, ninety point five dB sensitivity, twenty nine to thirty kilohertz, made of black granite. 14 inches deep by 18 inches wide and 43 inches high or 35.56 centimeters deep, 45.72 centimeters wide and 109.22 centimeters high. Now here's the kicker, 246 pounds or 111.82 kilograms. And the speakers are 36,000 Canadian, I'm not sure what they are in the US. And we we did a we did an interview with Val a while ago. So if you if you guys would like to know more about Val, um, Alex will link the inter, uh, the interview in the uh, description box. So why don't we just start first by the background? <clears throat> I heard the speakers before COVID. I think it was 2019 at the uh, Rocky uh, Rocky Mountain Audio Show. Um, I I must have met Val before he knew me. I. I, I didn't recognize him. He and his lovely wife, Cheryl, were there. They had this humongous hall, and he had separated them with um, uh, uh, fabric um, runners between, so you could break it into two separate uh, listening areas. And one was the small speakers, and the other one, I can't remember if it was the SRC1 or the SRC2. The SRC2 is the top of the line with two woofers. Um, my first impression was, wow, these are tremendous. They sound fabulous. And this is something I never said to Val, but I'm going to oh. publicly say. I was shocked at how good the speakers were. And I, as an audiophile and music lover, I immediately wanted to know more. But there was a part of me that was afraid. <clears throat> because number one, I knew they were expensive. Um, and number two, I wasn't sure from a business standpoint how it would fit into our store because at that point we had Focal and there was a conversation with the then distributor of Focal that we were going to get the Utopia series, the top of the line series. We already had the Sonus Faber uh, top of the line series and we of course had the Wilsons as well. So I didn't know how all of this was going to fit in. And the thing about me is I don't play games with people. If, if I show if I have interest, I'll tell you, and and um, I would at that point either buy samples or ask you for samples if you're the manufacturer if you have samples. Um, but if I don't think that we can accommodate the product for business reasons or for sonic reasons, I won't ask you to bring it in because I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to waste mine. So I I didn't ask Val much more than basic information and so on. And, and Val certainly was very interested. Um, and then shortly afterwards, we did in fact have some samples in, and then um, he updated the speakers and um, he brought the speakers back. Then there was, uh, after COVID, the Toronto Audio Fest happened. We were manning a few tables, selling accessories and so on, showing our face, talking to people. 
And Philip, during one of the times where he decided to bugger off and take some time off, he I took off five minutes for the entire he, he, show. He came back with this big red face and said, "Adrian, you got to go up there and listen to these chorus. They are unbelievable." And I said, "Wow, for Philip to say that's got to be pretty well, good." It was in a giant room, and there were, he had oh. the little ones in the middle of this giant room. Yeah. And so, so when I did have time, I did go into the room. He didn't have the little speakers playing the SRC ones. He he had again. I can't remember which ones they were. Either uh, either the well, SRC switching one. Switching back and forth. Yeah. So he had one of these uh, speakers, the SRC one or the SRC two, playing. And again, they they filled the room very effortlessly. They sounded great. And so I said, yeah, um, let's let's continue that uh, discussion, because by then we knew we were not going to move forward with Focal, and so there was an opportunity for us to uh, bring in the speaker line. Plus, I had <coughs> the guys, as the guys will tell you, I've always wanted to support Canadian companies, but I'm not prepared to support at the expense of quality. In other words, just because it's Canadian doesn't mean that we are. Um, going to hold the standards to a lower level it's got to be as good as anything that's out there uh, and if it is and it's canadian we will 100 percent support you so anyway uh, that's the background uh, of the src one or the the chorus so val is the designer and and one of the, op the operating partners of the company uh, he's a great guy so why don't we start with the uh yeah philip you want to start first Mm. So I've listened to this speaker a lot, like yeah. a lot, like I mean a lot. Yeah. And I still didn't really listen to it until yesterday. I mean, when I listened to it, I wasn't, you know, with with the lens of my 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 status as a reviewer, and technically I am sort of you know an esteemed reviewer. Um, I listened to the aperture right before I listened to the SRC one because I wanted to actually start from a kind of a lower position and and then see how this would scale up as an experience um, and that was my AB so I didn't really listen to this compared to anything else <laughs> it's such a strange experience so the review system basically is the 590 and the 590 was updated to hey, go. Yes, the H590 was updated to the new rune specification that they just released yesterday. And um, so I'm listening to the speaker and um, I'm actually playing his playlist. We have the Accora playlist here. So I'm going through his tracks and it was just so much. It was just so much. How do I, how do I describe this? Um, I was not happy at the beginning because the speaker is extremely extremely revealing it's 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 it just tells you what the recording is it really 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 highlights every bit of the recording now i've used certain words before in the you know in the past and vows sort of said to me well perhaps i should be a bit more diplomatic so how else how do i put it the speaker has a scalar function. I don't know if you noticed that, but in other words, whatever you feed into it, it expands on what you feed into it. So if the track is really immediate and very much leading edge, uh, um, a little bit bright, you're gonna hear that, but even more than what the track actually is. You have to be super, 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 super careful about what you play. Um, I'll give you an example. There's a track that's on his playlist that I played. It's actually uh, an old song by Merle Travis called um, 16 Tons. I know the song f really well. I kind of like that old country music, right? So if you listen to this song, it's like right there. It's like right there. You hear everything is so crisp. It's more than you probably want to handle. It's, it's so immediate, right? And for years and years and years, I've played this other version of that song from a tribute record to Merle Travis called Saturday Night Shuffle. And there's a version of that that's very homey and, and, and just laid back and just these guys who are like super talented, you know, pickers, guitar players who like the, the son of Merle Travis is actually singing on this song. And 
when you play that song on this system, it makes the system sound, although the speaker, it makes it sound totally different. All you get is the sense of like flow and you get this sense that, you know, you're in someone's very comfortable kitchen or something like that. Polar opposites. Like how, how can you get both from the same speaker? It's because it takes some sort of quality that's in the song and it kind of like, um, well, it magnifies it a bit, in my opinion. And so if the song is kind of, you know, uh, warmer and um, not so much where it's all all kind of like, you know, the edges of the instrumentation and, and, and the singing, you, you, you know, there's more depth to, to the recording. That's what you get out of the speaker. But if the song is the opposite and it's like that audiophile grade, you know, presentation material, um, which can be a little bit cutting, that's what you get. It's a total chameleon. I couldn't understand it because in my system at home, I have tubes and I have horns and it doesn't perform anything like what we have in a store. I get a, I get a, a complete sense of flow and rhythm and it's a little bit languid and it's very, very inviting. And this speaker can do both. It's sort of like, yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm yeah, blah, 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 right? And then suddenly it's like, oh, you know, just come on in, I'll wrap my arms around you and I'll make you feel very welcome. And um, I don't know how to describe it in any other way. I mean, I've heard the speaker so much. I love it, I hate it, I love it, I hate it, I love it, I hate it, I love it, I hate it. I love it. I hate it. I, 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 I don't know where it really stands. It's just, you got to be super, super, super careful when you set this thing up. And the way we have it set up, as Val has asked us to do so, there's like no toe in. And, but you get super strong center image. It gives you everything. And in this room, you get this gigantic sound stage and pinpoint imaging and unbelievable levels of dynamics. Like when it scales, it scales and it hits you really, really, really hard. And when you look at the speaker, you're like, that's a little tiny speaker. It is not big. We deal with much bigger speakers. Speakers of this ilk, this, this caliber, usually are double the size. I mean, we have big Wilsons and they do the same thing that this, this thing does. But, you know, it's, it's a much more money. Um, so, again, this is like this chameleon. And if you set it up really carefully it gives you back in spades uh everything that you would ever desire so, okay that's uh, lewis well well i love these speakers um unfortunately i i would love to have the um the money to buy them and put them in my <laughs> house but it's not going to happen so but um revealing yes layering yes bass oh yeah <laughs> from those little speakers i mean amazing definitely um would be on my radar if i became <laughs> into or won the lottery for sure um they look fantastic just not the same box um unusual i mean usual pattern um, but they are amazing center image is what um the lip says is fantastic layering of the sound is extremely you good. can pick out everything and it's like yeah front middle back right exactly and you know center stage the wide staging it's 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 everything what if you are an audiophile you would love um micro details macro details it has everything i would not go to say like what philip says that it brings out the bad in a bad recording most speakers will do that unless it doesn't have any detail i'm so, not saying it brings out the bad i'm i love it i hate it 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 saying that whatever is good it brings that out in in like huge amounts so depending on what the actual recording is doing you know the best parts of it are going to get magnified like uh, blown up you know in, in a sense you you definitely understand what's good about the recording but uh, I would not say that they are overly bright. I, I they, it, 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 it appeals to me. I just like the top end of it and the bottom end of it. I, I, it's, it's a complete system for me. Um, listening to it on the Hegel, um, and the Hegel has enough power behind it to drive them and drive them loud and drive them hard. 
Yeah, I'm, I, I'm in total agreement with your assessment. Um, definitely, I, I like them a lot. Like a what, lot. what volume did you have it at? I don't play it as loud as you do. I, I had it up to 70 again. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was loud. <laughs> well, at least you admit 70 is loud. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, that's what, 300 aside, right? Well, that one is uh, 330. 330 aside, uh, RMS at 8 ohms. So that means you're cranking him a lot. But no, I don't listen at those volumes. <laughs> at my age, deafness is hereditary in my family. So I don't want to f speed that. that what would you say? What you say? Pardon me? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was my, my, my short take on, on, on it. I do love the speaker. I do recommend it as well. Well, let me get to my points first, and then I'll see how this goes. One thing I've noticed with really good systems, musically and sonically, there's a distinction between the two. Really good systems encourage me to keep playing music. So a really great audiophile system tends to only encourage me to play audiophile recordings. Um, a really great system musically will encourage me to play all sorts of music, both audiophile and especially non-audiophile. And I think that for me, the Acoras can do both quite well. Um, uh, certainly, it, it does audiophile recordings really well, as Villa pointed out. Um, to a slightly lesser degree, um, musically, and, and what I mean by that is if I played terrible recordings, it won't hide it. it, it it's going to tell me it's a terrible recording. Um, it's not its fault. If it's a bad recording, it's like garbage in and garbage out. If it's a bad recording, it's going to be bad. And no amount of tweaking and so on is going to change that. Because if I were to do that, and I was able to um, ameliorate all the flaws of the bad recording, the other side is also now change. A great recording now sounds mediocre. Mediocre? You can't have it both ways unless you have an incredibly good um, EQ system of some sort. So wh what I would say is that for me, the, the speaker uh, uh, allows me to listen to very nice, decent recordings um, and still enjoy them. Very bad recordings, no, it, it's, it's not going to help. But that's true of almost anything that we have in the store. Uh, great recordings, spectacular. I, I can go through great recordings and, and I'll be stunned at how good that is and I'll keep wanting to play more. So that's part one. The other thing also is I've said this before, whereas there are speakers out there that can do similar things, especially with great recordings, oftentimes they leave me cold with normal, normal recordings of music that I love. Um, I won't mention any names, but uh, uh, some of you will, will certainly know what I'm talking about. Th this is not the case with the Acora, but you do have to be careful, and that's a caveat we'll get to in a moment. Um, so let me give you some examples of music that I like that are decently recorded, but really drew me in. Um, I've told the guys, uh, uh, well, let me start with this one first. For some reason, um, recently, my, the jukebox in my mind has been playing Beethoven's Piano Concerto Number no. 5. And so um, I, I found um, Rudolf Serkin and, and Seiji Ozawa with uh, Boston Symphony Orchestra doing this. And it's a Telarc album. In the past, when I've listened to this, I found it a touch bright. But what's interesting is with the Acora, I didn't. Uh, in fact, if anything, I discovered that this was actually recorded somewhat mid-haul, which I was very, very pleasant. I found myself not right on the stage um, with the pianist, as is often the case with uh, uh, piano concertos, but rather in the mid-haul. So I was able to enjoy the hall and, and the beauty of the hall sonically. And more than that, I was also able to appreciate that um, uh, Rudolf Serkin was playing this piece quite contemplatively as opposed to others that I've heard uh, doing the same um, piece. 
And then the other day I was talking to the guys about George Gershwin's uh, Rhapsody in Blue. And um, I had this album many years ago and couldn't find the album recently and found it on Tidal. And this is with uh, Bernstein and uh, the Columbia Symphony Orchestra. And what's fascinating is that the clarinet right at the very beginning, as I told the guys, plums from very low to the high notes all in one breath. And I found it fascinating because at first I didn't recognize that it was a clarinet because of the low notes and the high notes. And, and in the middle, I thought, yes, that's a clarinet. Then I thought, I was second guessing myself. Is this a clarinet? So anyway, started Googling all this stuff. And turns out when I said horns, uh, um, uh, uh, Gershwin, and Rhapsody in Blue, I got, I got articles about how the original uh, um, composition called for horns, taxi horns from, from France. And, and so they brought back these taxi, anyway, uh, uh, diversion. Um, th this ability to play from low to high notes in one breath is very difficult to do. Apparently, it's a, it's a technique called glissando. And I found it so beautiful. It, it evoked these beautiful memories. If you listen to this um, piece, listen right at the very beginning. And it just goes from low, very, very soft, and it goes all the way up to the highs. And it sets the tone for the bluesy theme of this piece of composition. And then uh, further in, you have the oboe now playing a dissension. The oboe um, um, plays these dissonant notes while the pianist is playing soft me melodic theme. And it creates this sense of tension as if it's a person that's out of his element in a new space. Again, it's for the first time I started to understand <clears throat> the name of the composition. Um, it was uh, um, absolutely gorgeous. I really, really enjoyed listening to this piece. And this piece is not badly recorded at all. It's not great necessarily. It's not tremendous, but I got lost in the music. And this was something that I thought uh, that's beautiful in terms of what the accord is able to do. Then, on purpose, I decided to play Vanessa Fernandez's uh, Black Dog. So, um, usually I would play the Led Zeppelin piece, but for some reason I, I decided I'd play Vanessa, uh, Vanessa Fernandez. And it was a well done uh, interpretation. Quite intimate, uh, well recorded. And then Michael Jackson's uh, Thriller 25 uh, Super Deluxe Edition huge 3D surround. For those of you guys looking for something that's interesting to, to check out in your system, check this uh, cut out. Then I played these other pieces of music which are sonically quite nice but more musically beautiful to me. Uh, Magic of Love by a singer called Pong Pan Chanet. I believe she's Thai. Um, absolutely gorgeous vocal and very evocative. If you listen to the lyrics, she's singing wanting you to lie down with her and be with her. And she's got such a beautiful voice that, yes, <laughs> absolutely, you want to do that. Um, and then Beauty and the Beast with the Brooklyn Duo. You're right there. It's beautiful recording, simple, no frills. And more than, more than that, the beauty of the playing, uh, the honesty and the truthfulness of the recording uh, and the singing. I mentioned Kiss the Rain in the early recording with Yuruma. So now coming back to the the cons, as Villa pointed out, um, are there potential issues? I think no different than any um, high resolution audio file system. It's one of the reasons why we generally as, as a group tend to veer away from ultra high resolution, uh, resolution uh, uber all, you know, everything else be damned. The reason why we stay away from those kinds of systems is because if you are a music lover first, those systems will disappoint you. Uh, you will you will play your reference recordings. You will play that Annette, whatever her last name is. I, I think. And, and never play anything else because that is the only vocal that you will enjoy. And then very quickly realize that musically it's, it's pretty dry. Um, it's not rewarding at all. And then you won't play your Peter, Paul and Mary's. You know, you won't play your John Denver's, you won't play your ABBA as we joke, and yet uh, beautiful music and many, many uh, uh, things, and many, uh, um, uh, for many people, I should say. Um, so oftentimes our systems tend to be more musically enriching rather than audiophile bass. Akora can do that, but 
you do need to be careful with system matching more so than um, the other speakers that we carry, the Wilsons and, and the uh, Sonus Fabers and so on. Um, when, when I was helping Val at the Montreal show a few months ago, we brought the D'Agostinos and they sounded mar marvelous. With the uh, D'Agostinos, which have a slightly warmer tone and, and more relaxed characteristic, although it's tremendously dynamic, I didn't find um, that the system sound exacerbated harshness. But I could certainly see that with some of the uh, well-known uh, popular Swiss electronics these days that are making the rounds. I can certainly see that the, the, the coldness of, of that uh, electronics with this, even with the Hegel, I find as much as I have huge um, uh, respect for the Hegel. It's too bad we never got to try it, try it with the boulder. I will tell you, I don't, I don't know that the boulder, well, I don't know the latest boulders, the 2050 that we had. I, I think the, well, I know for sure that the, the, um, D'Agostinos would be a, a much better choice as a comparison just because it's it's slightly more musical uh, to me. But certainly this is one of those speakers where you do have to be careful um, as far as your system matching, more so than um, the other speakers that we carry. Generally speaking, when Val does demo these at shows, and he does a lot of shows, he's using valve amplification, uh, VAC. Uh, he's, he has audio research. Uh, we unfortunately don't have amps like that in the store to drive it on a regular basis. Maybe we should try it with the Macintosh 3500. It might it might sync up a little bit better. Yeah, I think that they will definitely, you know, again, depending on what you're, you're after, there are people who only want ultra resolution and, and don't care about anything else. And if that's the case, then more power to you. Choose electronics that will give you that kind of resolution and, you know, cut off... Uh, all the other recordings that you might have and keep only 10. But if you care about listening and enjoying a wide variety of music that you care about, then you want to definitely be more careful with your electronics. Yeah, I was playing the Go-Go's and that was really <laughs> fabulous on these speakers. Yeah, yeah. So so that, that would be the only caveat really about the speakers. As far as all the other sonic spectacular stuff that it can do, uh, just listen to what the guys said. They they disappear like crazy. They they have tremendous dynamic capability, both micro and macro. Tremendous resolution ability. Image is nice and sharp. Soundstage is huge. Uh, Witness the uh, Thriller cut that I was talking about. Um, very neutral. Um, his tagline is uh, "Hear the he hear the truth." Right? Hear the truth. Um, and he's not wrong. The the speakers will do that. Um, but again, just be careful with the electronics that you match it with. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go with Strident, uh, no. ultra, yeah, ultra bright systems or even slightly bright systems. The, the speaker is more than audiophile enough for you to enjoy with, well, you know, less than audiophile leaning electronics, in my opinion. I think yeah. you get away with much more with this. It, it just doesn't need anything more. Like. Yeah, you know what? It'd be really interesting. Now that we finally got our stock again, we should break it in. The Macintosh MC275 with a, a, a preamplifier of some sort and see what it sounds like because it's it's got a nice bold sound and it's rich, you know, slightly forgiving. Um, match with these might be quite interesting to see what it sounds like. And, and, you know, I mean, the speakers are not cheap, but if you could find electronics that are not expensive... Uh, relatively speaking, match with it. I think that might be interesting to try try out. We'll, we'll, we'll try the next uh, and and maybe report back. Yeah. Yeah, we should try the uh, the twos. The twos can be a bit more of that because it has the beryllium yeah. Uh, tweeter. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, you guys uh, have any uh, the last words? I it's a two thumbs up for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not overly critical. So <laughs> it, it's 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 it sounds very good to me. Um, but I would love to hear them on tubes, as the the the, um, the Mac tubes would, you know, because the Mac is not overly tuby, right. so it will tame some of the brightness, whereas what some people may think. So, so Val, when are you dropping off a pair of like to my place? <laughs> <laughs> After what you just said, <laughs> I don't think you will. Oh come on, I was, <laughs> I, was being, I was being truthful. Yes. 
yes, and and thank you for that. So for me, um, um, uh, I forgot to mention the pros. Um, I mentioned the cons. Um, they're ultimately not as difficult to set up in terms of placement of the speakers. At least I don't think so. They will make they will make differences, and you can hear those differences. But even if you were just to plop them down, adjust them like a normal speaker, you'd adjust it. They will still sound wonderful. I mean, we've got the speakers foot and a half, two feet from the wall. They, they don't need to be 10, 15 feet from the wall like some audiophile speakers are. Um, they're quite easy to drive in terms of their sensitivity and their impedance load. Um, also a big, big part of this. There are lots of products that are made by terrible people in the industry. I won't mention names, but there are people, there are companies like that. This is the exact opposite. You know, Val is good people. Val is a solid. Uh, um, it's, it's not just Val, it's like his entire family. family. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Cheryl, great. Uh, as I wrote down here, Val is, as the Chinese would say, a mensch. <laughs> How do you spell that? Uh, it's it's actually a, a Yiddish word. Oh, <laughs> it's my yeah. ironic sense of humor. He's yeah. trying to be funny. Yeah, trying. It's my 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 Ashkenazi um, yeah. descendants. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so anyway, yeah, I I I I would definitely give it a two thumbs up if, as long as you understand what is required. Do not uh, be be careful not to just throw on um, um, lousy. I'm going to use this, but it's the wrong phrase, but some of you will understand, lousy Class D type amplifiers. Not that all Class D amps are like that, far from that, but rather a lot of Class D amps that sound brittle and, and, and harsh and so on, be careful not to do that. Just because the power ratings match doesn't mean that sonically they'll match. And again, that's sort of like, you know, it, 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 it makes any, any trait a little bit more than you would expect. So it brings out too much of that trait. Whatever is that trait, yeah, yeah. good or bad. Well, yeah. mostly good, but anyways. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, again, thank you for watching uh, us meander through this. Um, just want to share our love for the equipment that we carry. And as you can see, we're very honest about what we carry, uh, both good and bad. Um, Philip is nonplus in some ways, loves it in other ways about it. Uh, Lewis is uh, totally in. I'm almost all totally in. In fact, I am all in. Uh, that's why we have them. Um, just with the understanding that you do have to be, in this case, more careful with the electronics. Anyway, uh, Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada, Philip, Lewis, we'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.